Today's second video for you is first news story is from Eratia. While Tigray Defense Force, Tigray Generals are openly saying that uh, uh, they will take back their territories from Eratian forces and uh, the dispute uh, will not be resolved peacefully. Eratian military will not uh, withdraw from Tigray territories peacefully. What is happening in Eratia? Are there any military preparations? We have received some reports about Eratian military preparations on Eratia side of Eratia Tigray border. Secondly, UAE, the United Arab Emirates, has shown interest in expanding and renovating a port in Somalia. Uh, UAE is. Uh, a giant when it comes to building, uh, expanding, renovating ports in the Horn of Africa. In five countries of uh, the Horn of Africa and East Africa, UAE is involved in uh, constructing new ports or expanding old ports. We have details for you. Uh, second, uh, third new story is from Tegaray. Some French journalists, uh, one or more, managed to sneak into Tigray and they have shared a 24 minute long footage from Tigray. A heartbreaking footage which shows what the people of Tigray are going through. Fourthly, viewers, in two towns of the Amhara region, curfew has been imposed. Yesterday, there were clashes in these towns. Uh, some protesters were killed as well. And today, uh, joint command post announced imposition of curfew for specified hours. And lastly, Student protests in the Amhara region continue. We have a new story from Bahirdar. Firstly, words, the first new story is from Erat. Yeah. Uh, Tigray journals, uh, Tigray politicians, Tigray government, they are openly saying that Erat in military will not uh, withdraw peacefully from Tigray territories. And Tigray will use all options, including military option, to retake its territories from Eritrean uh, forces. So while Tigray is making preparations, as uh, was said by General Varede two days ago, he said Tigray had completed uh, its preparations. What is Eretia doing? Are there any preparations on Eretia side of Eretia Tigray border? Are these preparations uh, in Eretia offensive or defensive? Is Eretia planning to attack Tigray or is it making defensive preparations? Well, uh, what we have learned uh, is that yes, preparations are underway in Eretia. Eritrean military is on high alert. That is what we have learned from the ground. Uh, uh, veterans are being called. Uh, military exercises are underway. Uh, nighttime maneuvers are also underway. And retired soldiers, they have been uh, called back. They are reporting at uh, their units, their divisions uh, and locals, especially in border areas, they are being briefed and they are being armed as well. In a previous video, we shared this news that uh, local uh, locals living in uh, border areas on Eritrean side of the border, they were being armed by Eritrean defense force. Again, uh, that is what we are learning, that not only is Eritrean military being deployed to the border areas, but locals are being armed to and uh, a large uh, portion of Eritrean population is uh, trained because uh, military training is mandatory in Eritrea. That is why 
uh, most of Eritreans are trained. They know how to operate weapons mostly. But all these preparations are defensive. Uh, we uh, have no report uh, confirming that Eritrea is planning an attack on uh, Tigray. Preparations are defensive. But if Tigray attacks Eritrea on one front, there could be attack on Tigray from Eritrea on other fronts as well. Overall, now preparations are defensive. Yesterday, we reported that uh, Eritrea closed its border with Sudan. The border was closed due to Ethiopia-Sudan border fighting and due to uh, protests and law and order situation in Sudan, which is now spreading towards eastern Sudan as well, which shares border with Eritrea. In Gedaraf, we saw massive demonstrations yesterday. So, Eastern Sudan is becoming destabilized as well because of uh, ongoing protests in Sudan. That is why Eritrea closed its border with Sudan yesterday. And military preparations are underway in Eritrea uh, to defend against uh, an attack on Eritrea from Tigray. Uh, second new story is from Somalia, viewers, uh, where United Arab Emirates, UE has shown interest in uh, expanding and rebuilding a port, Kismayo port in Jubaland, which was built decades ago with US financial assistance. UAE has shown interest in expanding and renovating this port. Now, uh, UAE has uh, its presence, military presence, uh, in the Horn of Africa, in East Africa. And through building ports, through expanding ports, UAE has developed, increased its influence in the Horn of Africa. UAE, uh, we know, uh, UAE's DP World, Dubai, uh, Dubai Ports World Company, which is basically owned by UAE's ruling uh, uh, elite, reportedly, uh, it recently built uh, Barbara port in Somaliland. Uh, UAE was in charge of Assa port in Eritrea. UAE built a port in Djibouti as well. And now UAE wants to renovate uh, a port in Somalia. And a few days ago, UAE signed an agreement with Sudan to build a port in Sudan. So you see that uh, in Sudan, Djibouti, Somalia, Eritrea, UAE has been involved in port projects. That is how UAE uh, strengthens its uh, position, its uh, presence uh, on the ground in the Horn of Africa. UAE's DP World uh, Shipping uh, and Port Company is an international giant uh, which has extensive experience of constructing new ports and innovating old ports. Reportedly, Hassan Sheikh Mahmood, during his uh, recent visit uh, to the UAE, uh, discussed with the UAE government uh, about this uh, port project. Uh, some say uh, an agreement has been signed, uh, no confirmation. But uh, diplomatic sources are confirming that UAE has shown interest in uh, expanding and innovating a port in Somalia, Kismao port in Jubaland. Uh, next story is from Tigray viewers. Uh, Tigray under uh, a blockade since November 2020. Uh, around 18 months ago, Tigray was put under a blockade. Yes, uh, aid trucks have been allowed to enter Tigray, but the aid which has reached Tigray is not sufficient to meet the needs of the people of Tigray. Uh, international media is not allowed to cover Tigray. International uh, news outlets, uh, journalists, they are not allowed by Ethiopian government to travel to Tigray. A French uh, journalist managed to sneak into Tigray. Somehow he entered Tigray and there he recorded uh, the plight of Tigrayan women, children and elderly. 
he has recorded a 24 minute long footage which was aired by a French channel, TV channel. It's a TV report. Uh, the footage, it's heartbreaking words. The footage shows that uh, Tegarai women with their kids are bagging on roads. They have nothing to eat. People are trying to fill their bellies with uh, holy water. They don't have food to eat. Hospitals have run out of medicines. Medical aid is uh, nowhere to be seen. And people are dying. Doctors say that on daily basis people are dying because there is no uh, uh, medicine available, other medical items available. Recently, aid delivery to Tigray has improved. Uh, that number of trucks entering Tigray uh, has increased significantly. And it has been acknowledged by Tigray government. Why is that people are still suffering? So either it's because uh, of the fact that uh, uh, once you deliver aid, it takes time for this aid to reach all the people. Uh, and there have been uh, reports of fuel shortage as well. So maybe that is why. Uh, uh, and secondly, uh, almost entire Tigray is dependent on food. Entire, more than 90% of Tigray population is dependent on food. Uh, and uh, millions of people, you need to lots of food items, lots of uh, medical aid to ensure that all hospitals, all uh, units, uh, health units have uh, sufficient uh, uh, medicines and other medical items. So, uh, and uh, Tigray's farming season has just kicked off. Uh, Tigray farmers are in need of uh, seeds, fertilizers. Tigray was already dependent on food even before the start of this conflict. Uh, refugees in Tigray, they were being uh, uh, provided with aid by aid agencies. And now this conflict has added to this misery, to the plight of the people of Tigray. That those uh, who were well off, they are now begging on the streets of Tigray. It's alarming those. Uh, the video, uh, uh, this, this footage, when you watch it, uh, it's really very disturbing footage. We have a clip for you. Watch this clip uh, from uh, this 24 minute long footage. The people here where they are gathering are taking holy waters. As you know that the federal government with the Eritrean troops as they blockage the uh, humanitarian aid accesses that the people have nothing to eat. So they are trying at least... <laughs> help us. Everybody knows there is a big problem, but they are just talking about the problem, not about the solution. People are dying every day, every minute. Fourth a very important news story. Curfew has been imposed in two towns of uh, Amhara region. The towns are located in a North Chua zone of Amhara region. Uh, in the last two to three days, I reported about uh, protests in uh, uh, North Shiva zone of Amharian. region. I showed videos from Shiva Robit and I reported about Kavat as well, uh, which is again in North Shiva zone of Amhara region. And reportedly in Shiva Robit, Kavat. Uh, Curfew has been imposed for specified hours. A joint command post has been established there, led by Ethiopian National Defense Force. Local forces, regional forces and ENDF, they are part of this joint command post. And this joint command post is now overseeing uh, all the operations, all the uh, law and order situation in Shiva Robit where curfew has been imposed. 
why is that curfew has been imposed in Shivarov? But two days ago, there were uh, massive protests in Shivarov against Velaga massacre, in which more than 300 innocent civilians were killed. The students, residents of Shivarov, they took to the streets. And after this uh, protest, security forces launched a crackdown and they arrested several protesters and those who organized the protests in Shivarabit. Then yesterday, uh, locals uh, protested against arrests. They demanded the release of arrested persons. Again, there was confrontation between security forces and uh, Shivarabit residents. Police opened fire. Uh, I reported two casualties yesterday. Some say four were killed, but two are being confirmed. At least two Shiva Robit residents were killed yesterday after security forces opened fire. Then there was confrontation, clashes between locals and security officials. And now curfew has been imposed in Shiva Robit uh, Kevath uh, town of North Shua zone of Amhara region. Uh, and curfew is for specified hours, uh, vehicle movement. Uh, is being banned, uh, uh, carrying of weapons uh, is totally banned in Shivarabit and uh, uh, residents of Shivarabit they are being told that they should not come out of their houses uh, except during specified hours. So uh, the imposition of curfew is very clear. It shows that uh, uh, security situation in Shivarabit uh, is uh, uh, not very satisfactory and there are fears that locals could once again start demonstrations. That is why curfew has been imposed there. Lastly, Bahirdad University students are uh, continuing their protest as well in the Amhara region. Uh, Bahirdad University students uh, today uh, held a candle light vigil to uh, condemn Valaga massacre. We have seen demonstrations at Gondar, Bahirdar, uh, Debre Marcos, Debre Birhan, Volo, Valaga, and Addis Ababa universities. Police, uh, regional, federal forces, they have been trying to crush these demonstrations. Student leaders have been arrested in Bahidar as well. Reportedly, some students have been arrested. But still, you see that uh, demonstrations, protests are underway. You can see uh, some pics on your screen. The pics are from Bahidar University. Uh, the pics are from within, from inside the university, where students can be seen lighting candles to commemorate uh, the Valaga massacre to remember the sacrifice uh, of the innocent people killed in Valaga more than a week ago. Thanks for watching.